name's uh, John Wilkin, I'm uh, the owner of Pot Kettle Black and this is... Mark Flanagan, the other owner of Pot Kettle Black Coffee Shop in Barton Arcade, Manchester. Pot Kettle Black is a speciality coffee shop um, serving the finest quality coffee in Manchester. Um, the quality of our produce, uh, we think we sell the best coffee in Manchester and the setting we we, we have a great, great shop there, we can have business meetings, shoppers on a weekend, people in for just a, a drink, whether it be a wine, a beer, coffee, tea, uh, we suit pretty much any needs of a coffee shop. I think the highlight of our company was having a concept and, and developing a bit of a plan and then seeing that come to fruition and opening the doors on the first day, not knowing if anybody's going to walk through those doors, despite all the planning what you've done. And then on that first day to see customers walking out smiling and then off the back of that to build repeat customers we have some fantastically loyal customers who are with us every day and being part of someone's lifestyle is probably the coolest thing cool. isn't it? and I, we really get a buzz off people enjoying it if we see people or hear people talking about our, our business we get we get a bit of buzz off it because in the first couple of weeks it was all our friends and family and we knew everybody before they came in there and now we've, just, we've got people coming from all over and uh, people seem to like it. I think in business, full stop, you need to be quite thick skinned. Um, we had a lot of people telling us not to do it or why would you want to do that or what experience you have. I think if you've got a thick skin and you know confidence in your concepts and, and you've got a hard working mentality, you'll go a long way and you know, I think that's, we're not you know, coffee connoisseurs, we just kind of had a decent concept and, and worked hard at it and taken a lot of advice and, and that seems to have worked for us. Um, I, I personally think Manchester's in, in the start of a massive boom. Uh, there's talk in, in the press of, you know, being the, the Northern powerhouse and, you know, the last few years since we've been working in Manchester, we've seen food and drink, uh, the arts, loads of things just kind of exploding Manchester. I think it's only going to get bigger and better and, you know, I, I love being from Manchester, well, from, from Oldham just outside, but I'm, I'm very proud to be from Manchester and, you know, the, what we're well known for is, you know, great music, great football teams, you know, great sport in general and just a really buzzing place to be part of and I think it's just, it's just getting bigger and better. If you look at the city skyline, it's, it's full of cranes, there's activity going on, <laughs> the traffic's a nightmare, which for me is a good sign, people are, 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 are buzzing to get into the city. In food and drink, just in food and drink terms, like Mark said, the city since we came in has just completely changed. If we talk about our location in isolation, the Barton Arcade was a relatively redundant, beautifully appointed Victorian arcade. And since we've been there, there's three or four big businesses, a Spanish restaurant from Liverpool, uh, one on Burger restaurant has gone into that arcade. And there's, there's a lot of vibrant new brands. And I think one of the difference that we've got in Manchester is it feels like the home of independent brands, a lot of independent brands thrive and exist in the city and that's why as businessmen we're, we're delighted to have a business in Manchester. I think all the speciality uh, coffee shops in Manchester are, are great places. There's, there's obviously um, a lot of the big corporate chains throughout the country, there's, you've got your Starbucks, Costa, Cafe Nero, the, the big three. And, I think there's there's a big rise in independence and, and specialty coffee in, in general. So, you know, we, we go and visit you know our our, our specialty coffee brothers, whether it be Grindsmith, um, there's Tack, um, North Tea Power have been flying the flag for, for great coffee in Manchester for a long time now, and uh, there's, there's there's foundations, a few others, and you know the more independence we can get going, I think it'll be better for the industry in, in general. Yeah, I think in in Manchester as well. There's, there's a lot of chain coffee shops so part of what we've done is, is try to educate people on what speciality coffee is the reason why we saw some of the best coffee beans that you can buy from around the world and the science that goes behind serving coffee is something that we do but some great businesses in manchester white flash have said have been doing that for years and certainly grindsmith probably more masculine brand than ourselves uh, have done a great job and are growing very quickly uh, serve some great coffee but um, there's lots of little fantastic independent restaurants and places to eat in the city too. From a food and drink point of view I'd, I'd probably say Tim Bacon who sadly passed away recently. Um, I think what he's done for, for Manchester in general just, just not food and drink over the last 10-15 years maybe longer has, has, been, has been brilliant. Um, the amount of 
great restaurants, great bars, um, great settings. I think it's brought a lot of money to the, the city, a lot of people to the city. And you know, uh, there's been a lot of chains, uh, independents that have grown into chains and, and, and spread throughout the country. And I think you know, Tim Bacon, and probably a lot of other people from Living Ventures that have that have really contributed to that. I think from from our perspective, something that's quite close to us is. Uh, Mike Ingle and Allied London have put a lot of money into the Spinning Fields area. Not only that, not just building sort of high rise office buildings to house all of the sort of thriving legal and professional industries that we've got in the city, but also activating outdoor spaces. So, redundant spaces, you know, such as the lawns, areas like that, turning them into something and making usable outdoor spaces. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, Tim Baker. People like Mike Ingle from Allied London have not only brought money into the city and jobs, but have, have been quite creative and free thinking in how that they've uh, looked at using the city of Manchester for their business needs. You've got to trust yourself because there's, there's opportunities at the start of any business to doubt yourself and, and doubt your judgment, but if you've planned thoroughly enough and, and, and you're confident enough in what you have to offer, uh, you should really never need to compromise that and, and that will give you, should give you the confidence to, to continue. And there's so many ups and downs, yeah. it, it's like... It's a roller coaster in some ways. Yeah. When we think to back to when we first started, we were like washing pots, we were serving dishes, we were you know, on the till, we were doing everything just to make it work. And we made so many mistakes, but you only learn from those mistakes and we, we could have planned for years and we still would have made the same mistakes that we did. So I'd say it's, it's hard work gets you a long way in life, whether it's setting up a business or you're studying for a degree, you play sport, whatever you do, hard work gets you a long way in life. Yeah. And then I just say that, that resilient you know, attitude that we alluded to earlier, um, just, just, just be bulletproof and just, just, just do something you're passionate about and just, just pursue it. I think understanding as well that people in your business, our customers, you know, our interaction with our customers, our staff, it's, it's a people industry. Uh, most businesses are, but you know, and hospitality and especially, you know, speciality coffee is all about the people. You know, communicating with your customers, understanding what they want and need and our staff delivering an exquisite service, you know. Real small details, a glass of water with your coffee to cleanse your palate, little details what we look at just to help us engage with the customers. But I think really simply if you're starting a business, focus on the people, but that's your staff or your customers and the rest of it. The Northern Powerhouse, like we've discussed how powerful Manchester's becoming. The main, one of the main benefits of being in the city is the, the influx of, of money, of development, of, of, of people. Um, you know, it's, it's literally galloping at, at you know, such a rate now. It's an exciting place to be. And, you know, we're a business that aspires to grow, but we're certainly not looking to have one coffee shop. Uh, we want to grow into the city as it grows as well. And, and, Got aspirations to do that. We had a lovely meal at, at Hawksmoor last night. Um, we were just a bit too much wine. Yeah, I'll mention that. Yeah, um, yeah we, um, we, we were saying last night how, how great of a brand it is. It's, it's very consistent throughout the products, really, and the service is great. And, um, it's great to see you know, Hawksmoor moving up from, from London. Um, and then there's, there's great other restaurants that, that are they're from Manchester, um, Australasia. Lunya just opposite us in, in Barton Arcade is great. And then there's, there's loads of little yeah. pubs that we like to go to. Yeah, for, for fine, sort of more fine dining for the French in the Midland is it, great as an experience. You know, for people who enjoy that fine dining experience in the French, Mr. Cooper's house and garden as well at the Midland is always a favourite of mine, but Australasia, you know, we, we lunch. And there are about 10 to 20 bars that we like to go to as well. So. Yeah, we do like the bars. The bars and restaurants in Manchester are good. Yep. <laughs> I'm John. And I'm Mark. And this, this is Huddled. <laughs> <laughs>